of the Russian space station. We're talking on the telephone with Walter Cronkite, who uh, covered for the CBS News for so many years space travel. How are astronauts, how are these people who take this enormous risk, how are they different from you and me, from the rest of us? Well, a great number of them, the professional flyers, of course, uh, uh, have chosen that, uh, that uh, career of risk in the first place uh, by becoming not only ace pilots uh, in the military services, but test pilots as well. Uh, in which uh, they, they, uh, every flight is, uh, is, is loaded with danger uh, of the unknown. They're, they're, they're trying out equipment that has never been flown uh, in, in uh, the air before. Uh, they, they, that is their career. To them, it is only uh, the, uh, another step to move into the, that, uh, the uniform of an astronaut. Uh, the, for the others, the doctors, we had a couple aboard this flight, uh, the, uh, uh, the specialists in one science or another who go uh, in the pursuit of their uh, science, uh, they, they are extraordinary individuals who have chosen to get out of the laboratory and the, and the hospitals and, and, uh, and, and learn the, the, the secrets of uh, survival in space, and then they make these flights. Uh, I, I think we should uh, we should applaud all of them. Walter Cronkite uh, talking uh, with us uh, on the telephone. Uh, Miles O'Brien, please join us. Walter, uh, I'd like to uh, tap uh, your deep reservoir of knowledge and memory. Um, we remember Challenger so well and how long it took for um, NASA to get back in the skies. It was almost three years. Uh, of course, the Apollo 1 fire, which happened um, 1967, January 27th, uh, interesting, coincidentally, like the day before, there, there was less of a period of time because uh, it was in the midst of the moon race. Those were very different days, weren't they? Uh, yeah, I didn't quite understand you. Is this, uh, the, the period of time... Is this, is this Miles? Yes, it is. Yeah, right, Miles. I didn't quite understand. You're doing a great job this morning, by the way, Miles, as, as uh, CNN and rest of us of now expect. Well, thank you. But, but uh, I didn't quite understand your last question. I was trying to remember how long it was from the Apollo 1 fire to the return to the Apollo missions. It was much quicker. It wasn't the full three years that we recall from the well, Challenger that, days. That, that was a long one, of course. That was the longest delay. That was longer than the one, I think, that, uh, that uh, succeeded the, uh, uh, the, the Challenger disaster. Uh, I can't remember the exact numbers now, but it seems to me it was two and a half years or more, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, well, I can't remember the numbers right on, on the top, the top of my head, but I'm, what I'm trying to point out here is that there will be a fairly long period of time here for all of this to uh, play it out. As, as Bill Reedy of the manned space flight had said, we got to you know, find it, fix it, and, and, and resume. Uh, there is tremendous resilience to the space program, um, which you can attest to from its earlier days. I'm curious, do you, do you, can you feel, do you feel confident that there will be a return to flight one day for the United States? A return to what? A return to space for people oh, in, in the United States. Of course. A return to space? Well, I don't, I don't think this will seriously interrupt our program. Uh, uh, of course, it's going to depend entirely on how early they're able to determine the cause of, of this tragedy uh, and what it requires to to fix it. Uh, that that's that's the timetable that we face now. But uh, but uh, we're we're committed to space. We're not going to desert uh, our, the exploration of space uh, because of a setback as as tragic uh, as it is. Uh, we're committed and we're going to continue. Uh, the, the only debate, as you know now, uh, in the space program, and I think this is the only debate that will continue, uh, is, uh, is the proportion that we devote to robotic space, uh, the space, uh, to the early experiments in landing on Mars uh, uh, with unmanned flight and the, uh, and the devotion of time and expenditures of manned flight in space.
and that uh, debate will continue regardless of uh, the outcome of all of this. Um, yes, uh, absolutely. The, 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 this may this may bolster to a degree the argument of those who claim we we can do as much with robotic flight as we can with uh, manned vehicles. Uh, but uh, the argument for manned vehicles is still very strong that the curiosity of the individual who's landing and walking on those distant or orbs out there in space um, is uh, uh, of a value that cannot be replaced by, by machines who are simply communicating with men on Earth. Do you think, uh, Walter, that uh, the American people, up until something like this happens, take this for granted, what we see routinely there? Well, yes, I do. I, I think that, uh, you know, you, you know, Miles, as well as any of us, that, uh, that these, these shuttle flights don't even get in the newspapers, and the back pages, not even by the, by the funny, by the comic pages. There, there's no mention of, of the flights at all, unless, indeed, there is a daring deed out there in, uh, uh, in, in repairing the, the, the Hubble telescope or something of that kind, uh, helping to build uh, additions on the... Uh, Sky City out there, the, the international orbit. Uh, the uh, uh, we we don't pay any attention at all. It's just routine. It's as routine as the uh, as the commuter trains uh, running out of New York City. Hmm. It's and may, maybe more so. Yeah, yeah, maybe more so. Uh, let's take a look at that crew for just a moment. And I wonder, you know, um, they go into it with not a blasé attitude. I. I know all these people and I talk to them all the time and and what they tell you to a person is this this is a real dicey proposition it is risky business and uh, but a calculated risk that's the term they use and they um, uh, go to space fully aware of those risks and I was talking to Judy a little while ago about how different it is when you're talking about a group like this compared to the Challenger days uh, when we had uh, a civilian member of the crew, Christian McAuliffe. Is that, do you think that's different in the mind of the American people? Well, the, 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 uh, we, we know that, that uh, those involved in the space program are fully aware of the dangers, uh, the, the skill with which they put together the spacecraft, uh, the, the uh, precision with which the, the machinery is built, uh, to avoid things like happen today, uh, they, and it's interesting, as you know well from the, your your time around the space program, that our astronauts don't uh, swagger uh, through their day's work uh, aground, uh, but they are looked upon at the same time by their fellow workers who are not astronauts but uh, in the ground crews. They are looked upon uh, as uh, as heroes to be. Walter Cronkite, yeah, much is made of the white scarf. We use that term, but the the white scarf is perhaps a pejorative that doesn't fit for these people who uh, fully understand the risks and and are not out there, as you say, with that swagger. Walter Cronkite, thank you so much for being with us. You bet, Miles. Hang in there.